Welcome to Didn't Get Frazzled Presents Osteoporosis, Calcium, and Vitamin D for Patients. We will discuss osteoporosis, the symptoms, risks, diagnosis, screening, treatment, and prevention, along with extra detail on calcium and vitamin D recommendations. Have you ever seen an old lady hunched over her cane, creaking slowly down the street and wondered how she got that way? Osteoporosis. But don't think this just affects her. Osteoporosis can affect everyone eventually, and the sooner it's treated, or better yet, prevented, the better off you'll be. So let's get started. Osteoporosis itself causes no symptoms, but puts you at higher risk for fracture after a fall, especially of the spine, hip, and wrist. It can also cause collapsed vertebra called compression fractures, which can occur even without trauma. Compression fractures were called back pain, loss of height, and a stooped posture. Osteoporosis risk increases with age, especially for women after menopause. Having a small body frame and being white or Asian also puts you at higher risk. Certain medical conditions like an overactive thyroid, taking prednisone for a prolonged period of time, and intestinal surgeries that reduce calcium absorption will also put you at higher risk. The most important risk factors are the ones you can actually control. A lack of exercise, moderate to heavy daily alcohol use, and smoking all put you at higher risk. The way to diagnose osteoporosis is with a DEXA scan, also called a bone density scan, which uses x-rays to measure the mineral density of bones, most importantly of the hip and spine. We use the T-score, which is derived from bone density measurements in a population of healthy young adults. If you are within one standard deviation, your test is normal. Osteopenia is between one and two and a half standard deviations below normal, and osteoporosis is equal to or more than two and a half standard deviations below normal. So who should get this done? Screening is recommended for women age 65 and older and men age 70 and older. We also recommend DEXA scans if risk factors in men age 50 and older and postmenopausal women of any age. We discussed many of these risk factors already, like being thin, inactive, smoking, moderate to heavy alcohol use, and certain medical conditions. Also on the list is a family history of fractures, a personal history of low trauma fracture or recurrent falls, and vision impairment. Also important to consider is low bone density noted on an x-ray and low calcium intake due to dietary restrictions or poor health. Treatment is recommended if you have osteoporosis by DEXA scan or a prior fracture of the hip or spine. We also consider treatment for those with osteopenia and a high risk for fracture. The best way to determine fracture risk is to use the FRAX tool, which will calculate your 10-year fracture risk. You can Google FRAX tool or just go to my website where I have all the relevant links. Recommended treatment is exercise, adequate calcium and vitamin D in your diet, along with supplements if needed, and prescription medication. Bisphosphonates are the best treatment. The first three medications listed on the slide are tablets and are usually taken once a week or once a month. Side effects include nausea, reflux, and abdominal pain, especially if not taken correctly, and it is easy to mess this up. The tablet needs to be taken first thing in the morning with a full glass of water, no eating, taking other medications, or lying down for 30 minutes. For those who cannot tolerate the tablet, there is an intravenous option. This tends to be much more expensive, but is given less frequently. The total treatment is five years for tablets and three years for the IV medications. You and your doctor can consider a longer treatment at very high risk, but the data hasn't shown significant benefit to a longer treatment course, and it does put you at higher risk for the rare but significant complications of atypical femur fracture and osteonecrosis of the jaw. By the way, be sure that your dentist is aware if you're taking a bisphosphonate since osteonecrosis of the jaw can occur after a tooth extraction. Second line medications are less effective and or have more side effects. I personally don't prescribe any of these medications, but I do know patients at very high risk who couldn't tolerate bisphosphonates and were prescribed Fortio by their endocrinologist and are doing well so far. This medication has the best data of the five listed, but there are long-term safety concerns. As with all medications, talk to your physician about the risks and benefits for you. Prevention is important for all adults of any age, whether you have risk factors or not. The three components are exercise, calcium, and vitamin D. For exercise, we recommend 30 to 40 minutes, three to four days per week. This can include resistance training, but should also include some weight-bearing exercise. That is, any exercise where you're supporting your own weight, like jogging, for example. Calcium needs recommended by the International Osteoporosis Foundation are listed on the slide. As you can see, the needs of men and women are the same until menopause, then women need more calcium until men reach age 70 and their needs catch up. You do not need supplements if you get this much calcium from food. We'll discuss the best food option for calcium and vitamin D shortly. Vitamin D needs, recommended by the Institute of Medicine, are listed on the slide. The International Osteoporosis Foundation recommendations are similar but slightly more aggressive above age 60. 
Your actual vitamin D needs vary by country based on your latitude. Those at higher latitudes get less direct sunlight and will have higher vitamin D needs. The best supplement is a daily vitamin D3 capsule 1000 units, which will easily cover your needs at any latitude. Do not take a higher dose than that unless directed by your physician based on a low vitamin D level. You do not need to take a supplement if you get enough vitamin D from food and sunlight. But the real question is, will reading my book help prevent osteoporosis? And the answer is yes, if you read it outside in the sun while drinking milk. Otherwise, not so much. Although you can also prop your Kindle on the treadmill while you exercise and ward off osteoporosis with a smile on your face. If you're interested in a rousing provocative story about medical school or want a backstage pass to see how this doctoring journey begins, please go to my website and check it out. Supplements are okay, but the best way to get calcium is in food. Dairy has the highest calcium content, milk, cheese, and yogurt. Also, canned sardines and salmon are high in calcium. If you are lactose intolerant or a vegan, you have other options. Calcium fortified bread and cereal, green leafy vegetables like broccoli, kale, and bok choy, and also almonds, Brazil nuts, and dried figs. Even some commercial mineral water and fruit juices have calcium. Check the nutrition facts on the package for calcium content and add up how much you are taking in daily. Be sure to avoid caffeine and salt, which can increase calcium loss, excessive alcohol, which decrease both bone health and increase fall risk, and probably soda. There is no conclusive evidence soda directly weakens bones, but if you drink soda instead of milk, then yes. If you've got children in the house, set a good example. Your body produces vitamin D when exposed to sunlight. We recommend 10 to 15 minutes of direct sunlight to the face, hands, and arms daily. Limit to no more than 25 minutes per day to avoid increasing your risk for skin cancer. If you have darker skin, you'll need more sun than someone with lighter skin. And remember, this is direct sunlight, not through a window. Window glass filters out the beneficial UVB rays, but not the cancer-causing UVA rays. If you drive for a living or otherwise work by a window, wear sunscreen. Getting enough vitamin D in food is challenging. A good source is fatty fish or canned fish, as detailed on the slide. Dairy does not have vitamin D unless it's fortified, so milk and yogurt are good sources, but ice cream and cheese are not. Fortified orange juice is a good alternative if needed. Other sources are fortified cereal, beef liver, cod liver oil, and egg yolks. Thank you for watching Didn't Get Frazzled Presents Osteoporosis, Calcium, and Vitamin D for Patients. For additional information, go to my website, davidzhurst.wordpress.com, and click videos. There you'll find all my videos along with hyperlinks, including the FRAX tool to calculate fracture risk, more detail on calcium and vitamin D content in foods, and a really cool map that shows fracture risk by country. Please like the video and click subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I post another detailed video on various common medical conditions. I wish you all good luck and good health.